Hi, my name is Kevin Golson. Today we're going to talk about performance engineering using Docker. One of the reasons that people are hesitant for doing this is what I call container fear. They have the general idea, the general sense that containers are going to impact their ability to, to do high performance computing in multiple different ways. But a lot of them have to do with the fact that they can't control jitter, um, that the uh, runtimes become unresponsive, and that they can't access the system, call, system directly. And that manifests itself in several different aspects, such as not being able to call the system calls natively, direct memory access uh, of the system natively, um, have multi-home NICs natively, use high performance network cards natively, etc. On top of that, they feel like you can't pin things to CPU, you're not going to be able to use uh, memory isolation such as NUMA, and all other host of things that uh, simply isn't true, and this video is going to start addressing that. So this video is actually the first in a series of videos where we're going to be addressing everything that I've just mentioned. Today we're going to be talking about system calls, right? In the next videos we'll be talking about uh, disk access. After that we'll be talking about memory access for on heap, off heap, uh, everything with and inside containers, and as well as memory access for single NICs, high performance NICs, multi home NICs, etc. So how does one test this? What do we do? Well. So first of all, please find the code right here in the uh, Get, GitHub repo displayed on the screen. And what you're going to do is you're going to run the same program twice, one natively and the other one inside of a container. Um, and then we're going to compare the outputs. We'll talk about how we compare the outputs in just a second. Now, because we're trying to get a relatively good sample of performance, we're going to run this on a couple of different environments. We're going to start out with the AWS Vanilla T2. Um, and then we're going to move all the way down to the AWS metal systems and we're going to start pinning things and we're also going to start making sure that that Docker is going to be running on a very specific set of CPUs and we're going to compare the outputs as well. Now, how do we compare the outputs? We're basically going to be using a system called localized statistics instead of global statistics and I have another video coming out about that as well. But in a nutshell, what localized statistics does is it breaks everything down into individual buckets of a certain size counts and then you can arrange them over time uh, sequentially and then you can look at the percentiles within those buckets as we go through the video i hope this will become a little bit more clear um, to why this is such a good way of looking at data when you're, you're working on performance optimization systems so let's look at the code that we're going to be using right off the bat I have a pretty simple Java class here called native call sample times. And what it does is, I mean, it loads some environment variables so that we can help direct the, uh, the output of it. And it runs the sample clock time millis and the sample clock time seconds, which as you can see are pretty much the same things as each other. But what they do is they just run in a for loop for a, determined, a predetermined amount of time and they measure how long it takes to make that system call time, right? And then that duration they put into a byte buffer, which I then just write out to disk. Now the writing out to disk is the least important part of this tutorial. So we're going to jump over it. You guys can look at the code if you want to. Um, let's look at this uh, from the command line, shall we? First, let's make sure that we are running the appropriate target or the appropriate project. And you can see that we have the right uh, source file. So what we're going to do is we're going to build it. Right. And at the same time, now that we've built that, what we're going to do is we're going to build a Docker file. And I'm using a different Docker file name since I'm going to have multiple series in this or multiple videos in this series. And let's get a run. Mm. Okay, so let's explore how we're going to run this thing. First, let's look at the native running. And what you can see that I'm doing here is setting a whole bunch of Java ops. Um, and then I'm setting the environment variables. Now, if you look inside of the Docker file itself, you'll see that the same Java ops are being set. And if you look inside of the Docker compose, you'll see that the same environment variables are being set. Um, in fact, should be changing these out. Mm -hmm. And from there, um, let's run this thing. Um, let's make sure that our runtime uh, collection location is empty. It is. So let's now run an example of it. Oh, we have to give it a label. Let's call this Mac1. Great. 
And if we look inside of the Docker Compose YAML, we're gonna call this Mac One Container. So do Docker Compose up, uh, build, enforce, recreate. It's gonna build it and it runs the thing as well. Now, if we look inside our var, we can see Mac One millis and nanos and a Mac One Container millis and nanos. As you saw before, these are native integers, the durations of each of the system calls. So the file itself is not readable, which means we have to parse it. Oops, uh, that read dash F. Let's pick the millis, shall we? Um, and then let's do the same thing with the millis from the Mac one. And what we're going to do now is basically look at the graphs of these percentiles, the 50th percentile put back to back to each other, 99th percentile put back to back to each other, so on and so forth. So let's look at um, what this, this file did is output the XLS files um, or the inputs. So let's open those guys up and compare them. This one here is your basic Mac one. And you can see here's your 50th percentile. And this is Java, so you've got a warm up period that uh, seems to be quite bad, but after that warm up period, you know, uh, the 50th percentile looks relatively stable. Now, the same, the 90th percentile's got some jitter that you gotta deal with, and 99th percentile, and 99.9th, 99, and five nines and six nines and then your max so you can see um that it's an okay run now we can do better and we will do better when we're running on native linux but let's just look at our containers what hap what what does our profile look like on the container well it looks pretty darn stable in comparison to um its brother over here on the 50th percentile but let's keep exploring and see what else we have Right, here's your 50th percentile, 90th percentile, 99th percentile, but your, your 99.9th, right, looks actually significantly worse um, than it did on its, uh, on the native system. Here we are on the metal host, and we can do a, a less CPU. See, we've got uh, two sockets uh, with NUMA enabled, and um, each of those sockets uh, has 12 cores. So it's a pretty good machine. Uh, if you want to look at the hardware layout, you can see, there you go. Now, again, this is a pretty simple system. What we're gonna do, I've, I've taken the, the liberty of pre-installing it, of course. So if we go and we have a look at the VAR, it's empty. But let's look at our run, um, same thing. Java ops being set here, right? Some uh, environment variables being set there, requires a label. And there you go, you're just uh, running the native system time calls. So let's have a look at what that looks like. And let's just call this AWS uh, metal and run that. And that finished a lot faster <laughs> than uh, on my Mac. So the entire process took 50 milliseconds. Well, let's see what this looks like. Oh, let me uh, have a look at the Docker system. Docker Compose, right? Same thing, you'll notice we're still not uh, isolating anything. Um, and we're setting the environment variables. So if we do a Docker uh, Compose up, uh, force recreate. I don't need to build, I just need to I don't actually need any of that. I just need to run it. And again, 52 milliseconds. Um, so let's go have a look at our variables directory. Great. These are all things that we can look uh, work with. We're going to come back into here and we're going to create another directory called AWS Metal Unpinned. Um, and then we're going to SCP. All right. So let's just use the millis again, keep things uh, consistent. The millis. 
and we're going to say great. So if we look at our XLS files, one, two, millis to millis. Mm -hmm. And what we're really doing here is comparing personal runs, right? So how did this particular run uh, compare with itself in a containerized version of it. Let's go have a look. We're going to do pinned in a second as well. Uh -oh. Well, so far, the containerized looks about the same. And looks about the same. Um, actually looks a little smoother than the native ones. Let's scroll to the bottom and look at three nines. Let's go down here to three nines. Three nines looks about the same. 25,000 high. This is 20,000 here. But if you start looking at the number of violations here, we have a little bit better on the native one versus um, the containerized one. But the profiles are not terribly different. So what we're gonna do in addition to this is we're gonna look at the pinned one. So how do we look here? If we add some data labels, let's skip over that data label. So this, this big one, the reason I'm skipping over it is because this is a warm-up time. So I'm picking the next highest one that's not warm-up time. Oops, and we can add a data label. This actually looks better, right, than um, the person down here does. And you'll notice that they're about the same times, 14 to 16, and this is about 14 to 16. If you look at the max performance, containerized is actually performing a little bit better um, from a worse performance than the native one is. Now, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to run and pin. Now, how are we going to pin this, you ask? Well, quite simply, we're using this task set. Dash CPU. Well, let's go back to that. LS uh, mass ETL dash H, and we're going to do task set dash C. Let's do one, two, three. five and then run and we're going to call this aws metal pinned it's about the same 50 milliseconds and we are now going to uncomment um that's uh, the resource constraints from docker compose AWS pinned. This gives us 51 and 50 milliseconds. And now we're going to do Docker compose up again. And 52. If we look inside our directory, we can see all four of them. So let's go back over here. And we're gonna do the latency record for the millis to be consistent again. You notice we have three violations, three violations. The 99 max actually looks better here. But let's look at the graphs because the picture is worth a thousand words. So, um, All right, again, what we're comparing uh, these runs are against each other. 
And at this point, since we're now doing a few different things, we can compare them against the macrons just uh, for the sake of curiosity, I, I expect. I'm including the title so that we can see what it is we're looking at. Okay. The violations look okay. Let's look at the 50th percentile. And on the 50th percentile, it looks darn near the same. So this is container pinned, and this is just pinned. These look to be almost identical. A little variability right there at the beginning. 90th percentile, container actually looks a lot smoother down at the 30 nanos, 30 nanosecond level. Let's skip to the three nines because I saw that one. Here is three nines comparing with each other. This container one actually looks better again. Um, the top one. Yeah, let's go look at the max because that's what we were looking at previously. Mm -hmm. And again, the container, even from a runtime profile perspective, seems to be outperforming the native one. Now, because people are interested, or at least I presume they're interested, let's compare them Oops, just to the Mac. Mm, let's compare it. Here's the Mac native. Here's Linux metal pinned. And Here's Linux Metal Max. You can see this is much, much better um, from both a profile perspective as well as just an absolute value perspective. If you go look at the top here, um, even the total number of violations in the 50th percentile uh, looks a lot better uh, in the metal pinned versus your Mac is just showing a 30 almost a 2x increase in speed actually what are we concluding here is that when running on linux systems comparing these these calls to each other the containers are performing on par with the native calls even when we start talking about cpu binding even when we're starting to pin CPUs in order to reduce that jitter and reduce the variability, which is very interesting information. Great. Like I said, we're going to follow this up with a couple more uh, episodes in the series, specifically talking about uh, direct memory access of on heap, of off heap in containers, how that works, as well as um, network access. Uh, including high performance uh, Mellanox cards and multi homed container systems. So until then, happy coding, everybody. Thanks again.